And you can almost see how it played out. The people taking the recording were like, ooh, this place is called Death Valley and the year ends in a 13. How can we turn this into more of an unrelenting hellscape? I know, let's pretend we have a temperature that kills microbes and begins with the number 13. Hello, as they say in the United States, I'm just gonna to cut to the chase. You may have seen the news reports going around of heat waves in the western portion of the United States, and I've seen them too. And it sort of called to mind a video that I did a few weeks ago uh, called British Heat Waves Ain't Got Nothing on America. And since that video went out, we've had examples in both countries of why that's true. Heat waves, it seems, are like flow from progressive. They're, they're everywhere. Back in July, a heat wave swept across Europe and all of my British friends were telling me, we still don't want air conditioning. We are happy to lay in a pool of our own sweat. We just wish it wasn't quite so unfit for humans, right? And it became such a big thing that it was trending at the top of Twitter. That's how you know that things are important these days. And then news reports started doing the rounds that Britain had experienced its third hottest ever temperature recorded at Heathrow Airport and to this day, I think that was just the climate getting its revenge for Terminal 5. Now in the video that I did, I talked about how temperatures of 100 degrees Fahrenheit are rare in the UK. Well, this recording at Heathrow Airport was almost exactly 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 37.8 degrees C. And I've got to say, as somebody who grew up in Britain, if I'd never moved to the United States, I'd consider that unfit for humans, right? I'd be the person propping up that trending term at the top of Twitter because I'd be ranting and raving about it 24-7. I also wouldn't be using terms like 24-7. But the truth is, I did move to the United States and I've seen the extremes of the weather here. Just the other week, I was down in the basement with my wife and cat inside a cage. The cat was inside a cage, not my wife. And the reason that we were down there is that air raid sirens were going off all around us. I should probably explain to my British viewers that we, this wasn't the Blitz, right? It felt like it for a little while. It was a tornado warning. Here in Chicago, found out the other day, a tornado did touch down just a few miles north of where we used to live. And as you can imagine, while I looked outside and saw the suddenly hellish skies and swirling leaves, I was as cool as a cucumber. And in fact, right now as we speak, you might be able to hear it, somebody has a leaf blower going outside, so subsequently doing great community work, but ruining my video. And two years ago, I experienced a heat waves polar <laughs> opposite uh, when we had the polar vortex. So I like to think I'm no stranger to extreme weather, except this past weekend on my secret live stream, one of my patrons pointed out that the temperature had just risen in San Francisco to 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And I know that doesn't exceed 100 degrees. What's special about that? It's San Francisco. I've been to San Francisco in July, no less, and you can't even achieve that temperature in an oven. And I suppose this caught me by surprise because I'd been so busy I hadn't read the news in about four days. So right after that live stream, I made a very irresponsible decision. I went to weather.com. If you want to feel a sense of calm, reason and logic, never go to weather.com. But I did, and in addition to telling me that the Pentagon was pursuing UFOs for some reason, it also showed me some of the temperatures that were coming out of the West. And I genuinely didn't know which climate story stunned me the most, whether it was the one about it being 127 degrees Fahrenheit or the one about aliens living among us. I ended up deciding that it was marginally the aliens because I couldn't figure out why they'd want to put themselves through those temperatures. But those temperatures weren't the end of it, nor were they the worst of it. Now, news reports are indicating that Death Valley in California might have broken not only the world record, but in doing so, its own record from 1913. Preliminary reports, and I like using words like that because it makes me feel like a meteorologist, which I'm not. I'm just a casual fan, which you need in a heat wave. Preliminary reports are suggesting that Death Valley reported a temperature of 130 degrees Fahrenheit. But hang on though, because when I read that, I thought back to that video I did and remembered that the one from 1913 recorded 
134 degrees Fahrenheit. So what's this all about? Well, it turns out that there was a study done in about 2016 that suggested that that temperature that was given at the time might be erroneous, might not actually be correct. And the main reason for that is too scientific for me to understand. But it seems to be temperatures that were taken at the time in the surrounding areas don't sort of corroborate what would have happened there at Death Valley. And you can almost see how it played out. The people taking the recording were like, oh, this place is called Death Valley and the year ends in a 13. How can we turn this into more of an unrelenting hellscape? I know, let's pretend we have a temperature that kills microbes and begins with the number 13. Put simply, the one in 1913 isn't a reliable record. Whereas if this one, this one right here right now in 2020 is verified, then not only will it be the first verifiable temperature to reach into the 130s, but it will therefore be the hottest on reliable record. And even if you dismiss all of that, it is going to be the hottest temperature ever recorded in the month of August. Either way, Death Valley, you know, home to deserts and The Undertaker, is an extreme place. It's so extreme that you don't just have today's 2020 record, but until this week, it had sort of loosely been held that the second hottest temperature on record was in 2013 in Death Valley. That said, could any of this be more 2020 if it tried? What's that? A Fionado. What's a Fionado? Okay, apparently there now exists something called a Fionado and it happened in Death Valley. Only on Earth could this happen. That's it for this episode. To my viewers who are in the Western United States, stay safe. Right? Crack up the aircon, have lots of water and use this as an excuse to have ice cream. If you like what you see here and you love the sound of my voice, why not consider following me on Twitter and read my tweets as if my voice we're saying them. You can do that at Lost in the Pond US. And as ever, do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond or turned into a fire nado. Actually, that would be amazing. An enormous thank you as ever to all of my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>